Hello, saints. Hello. Glory to God in the highest of peace on earth and oneness to you all. Yes, today I'm going to be talking about the New Jerusalem, everyone. Um, the long-awaited subject and topic, the New Jerusalem. I have a lot of content to um, lay before you all today. But first, we want to go to God in prayer and do a little bit of singing. Welcome to Lord. God Almighty, who was and is to come in the house, you all, the anointing, the Holy Ghost, fire his spirit over us, Father. Heavenly Father, I thank you to God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who was and is to come, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who walked the earth in the flesh, Father. Father God, you know all things. May we reverence you. May we worship you, Father. May we sing praises to your mighty name. Amen. Glory to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, God. God of God, King of kings, Lord of lords, for your mercy endure forever. Father, may you cover us with the blood, with the Lamb's blood on our doorposts, on our homes. Let us believe in your word. Let us be doors and just hearers. God, our eyes, our hearts, our minds, our footsteps. Let us pray for one another. On shoppings, on Shopping at any two-edged sword, Father. Let us get wisdom, knowledge, revelation through your Holy Spirit, through your anointing of the wine, of corn, and of oil. You are deliverer. You are conqueror. You are overcomer, Father, that we may be overcomers. We are overcomers in you when we believe and receive the salvation of the Lord. You died on that cross that we may live for eternity, Father, to reign with you, to come back, to reign and judge with you in the new Jerusalem, Father. Let each and every heart bow to know that you are the Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Cover us, Lord, our minds and our hearts and our bodies, Father. Let us be steadfast and move always abounding in the Lord for your mercy endure forever. I thank you for using me as your vessel. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, this video is covered in the blood, everyone. Yes, I hope you all are being in oneness with the Father and the Son and the true meaning of, of being in oneness with God. We must place him first over all things, no matter what you see around you, no matter what you hear. All right. We don't accept the things of the enemy, but we accept the blessings of Christ, everyone. So we're going to say amen. Amen, 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 hallelujah, amen, 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 see the baby, amen, lying in the manger, amen. On Christmas morning, Amen, Amen, Amen. See him in the temple, Amen. Talking with the elders, Amen. Marvel at his wisdom, Amen, Amen, Amen. Down at the Jordan, Amen. John was baptizing, amen, and saving all sinners, amen, 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 hallelujah, amen. Come on, y'all. Amen, 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 amen. 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 See him at the seaside. Amen. Talking with the fishermen. Amen. And making them disciples. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes. 
The Spirit of God is in this place, everyone. I'm going to have a lot of content for you all. I don't know. This might go into two videos. I don't know, but this is going to be a beautiful presentation. I took my time. Today, you all, we are in talking about the New Jerusalem. And um, we're going to be in Revelations. We're going to be in Genesis 3.22. We're going to be all over this Bible today, everybody. All right, we're going to be in Revelations to about the tree of life, Revelations, Tribulation, Saints, Revelations, the new names given to us, Revelations, Overcomers, Powers over the nations, Revelations, White Garments, the Worthy Garments, Daniel names written in the Book of Life, Revelations 11, 12, Pillars in the Temple of God, Revelations, the Throne of God, Revelations, the Elders, the Crowns, the White Clothes, the White Garments, Revelations, the lamps of fire burning before the throne, the seven spirits of God working of the Holy Spirit and revealing God to man, Revelation, sea of glass, four beasts, Revelations, book sealed, seven seals, Revelations, prayers of the saints, Revelations, every creature will praise God, Revelations, 144,000 of the tribes of Israel, Revelations, the 12 apostles. All right, you all, the 12 angels, the 12 tribes of Israel. Jerusalem is made like a cube, Revelations, the pure water of life. We got the tree of life is going to be in Revelations. All right, you all, we're going to be, I'm going to be um, bringing to you, we're going to be in Exodus 1, Exodus 3. We're going to be in Isaiah. We're going to be in Ezekiel 40. Revelations 21, Isaiah 65, 7 through 25. So we have a lot, have a lot in store for you all on the subject. We're talking about the New Jerusalem, everybody. We are talking about this New Jerusalem. This is going to be a city coming down from heaven that John saw, Ezekiel saw. God gave his visions through the Holy Spirit, his anointing, Holy Ghost fire. All of this is coming for us believers. Who is us? Believers who want to believe in Christ, who repent and come from wickedness, turn from wickedness, be obedient to God, walk in his ways, walk in the truth, walk in the life. God say he is the resurrection and the life. The true believers, the bride, the true believers of Christ. Jesus is coming back for his bride to reign with him in New Jerusalem, to sit with him with the Father, you all on the throne. Okay, you all? So, this is going to be an awesome lesson. So I pray that you all stay with me and receive the spirit of God, the anointing. Okay, over the word, the word is blessed. His truth endure forever. God is a God that shall not lie, everyone. So the Holy Spirit tell me where to start in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone, yes, 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 yes. What a mighty God we serve, mighty to save and mighty to heal everyone. Okay, I'm going to give you all first a gist of the new heaven and the new earth. Okay, what is the Lord talking about here? Now, if you get your Bibles, everyone, because I'm going to be all over this Bible today. And you all can um, go with me on different things. And try to follow me as I go along because, like I say, I have a lot of content that I want to bring because everything is not just in Revelations, it's in other things in the Bible as well. Okay. So, in the, in, in, in the, um, in the New Jerusalem, what will be in New Jerusalem? The tribulation saints will be in New Jerusalem, okay? The people that made it through tribulation that received Christ after the tribulation, okay? The believers taken up in a rapture will go, all right? All believers, the dead in Christ that was believers will rise first. Those people will come, be in there, all right? People will have their white garments, 
the garments that they were worthy of because they were believed and steadfast through all the times. And the people with the names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, their names will be there. All right. The 24 elders, white crowns and with their crowns and gold crowns and white clothes. Okay, the 12 tribes of Israel, the tree of life will be there. Just as in, in Genesis uh, 3.22, you all, the, um, the 12 angels, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 gates, 12 pearly gates, the 12 apostles, everyone. These are the people that will be there, okay? And we're going to um, go into our study. Now... We also have in Revelation 22, 15, the people that will not be in New Jerusalem. Okay, everybody. Now, the people that will not be there are the people that did not turn to God, all right, who worshiped Satan and the devil and his minions, the people who are not walking with Christ and don't want to believe in Christ and not turning from wickedness and not repenting from their ways, all right, in Revelation 22, 15. We talk about for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right. So these type of people that's not of the tree of life will not receive the fruit of the tree of life. Just as in 22, uh, Revelation 22, 14, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Okay, now those who have rights to the tree of life, okay, because in Genesis 3, these are the ones that will be in the New Jerusalem, okay? Now in Genesis 3, 22, go with me for a minute, everyone. Genesis 3, 22 now. Okay, let me go. Genesis 3, 22, it says... And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is come as one of the, as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. See, right there, Jesus said, you take of the tree of life and you eat forever. See, Jesus is the tree of life, okay? And we eat from the fruit of the tree, everyone. Therefore, the Lord God sent him from uh, forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So we drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So Jesus placed the, the, the cherubims in the garden of Eden to guard the tree of life, okay, to place the way of man, okay, because Adam, you know, Adam was, um, Eve bit the other tree, all right, and she tempted Adam, even though Adam know he was not supposed to do that. He, they were not supposed to do that. They left the serpent in the garden in Genesis. You all know the story, uh, fooled them, okay? So they had to be thrown out of Eden, all right, with the tree of life. But God is placing that tree of life back because he is the resurrection and life. So we, we, we eat the fruit from him. The tree of life that's in Genesis will be placed for the New Jerusalem. That tree of life will be in the New Jerusalem. And those uh, that believe in him will eat from that tree. Okay, so he blocked that tree off from us. And then he's giving it back to us. All right. With the devil meant for evil, God meant it for your good. All right, everyone. Okay. Just a second here. Let me get... Told you I have a lot going on here to give you all. It's a lot that I want to come to you all about. Now, in Revelations 4 or 5, we're going to talk about the seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. The seven spirits of God. Okay, you all? Revelations. Go with me right now. In Revelations 4 or 5, for a second. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begat, begat loveth him also, that is, is begotten of him. 
All right. So when you love God, Jesus, Lord of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you love the Father because the Father, Son, and one of He, right, you all? So by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh. Okay. Okay. I just read to you all 1 John. Okay. We're going to add that in as well. I just, that this is also true. That was first John. Maybe the Holy Spirit put me there. <laughs> We're not supposed to be in Genesis and I'm in first John, but <laughs> maybe the Holy Spirit gave me those verses. I don't think it was by mistake, but he said, whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is born of God and every one of them that loveth him that begat love of him also that is begotten of him. All right. So I was thrown there and I'm supposed to be in Genesis. <laughs> Oh, Father, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, guide me. I asked him to guide me before I came on here, so I believe that he has guided me. He must have wanted you all to see that. <laughs> I'm, I'm always ended up in the back of the Bible to First John. I belong to Genesis 3.22, so that, was, that must be something that God wanted y'all to see. Maybe you need to see that first, okay? Help me, Holy Spirit. Okay, Genesis 3, 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Like I say, therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden the cherubims and a flaming sword, which turn every way keep, to keep the way of the tree of life. All right. See, the, uh, the, the tree of life has to be reserved. The way of the tree has to be reserved. So we as believers and walk with God and righteousness and oneness with the Lord, not Satan, but walking with Christ, the Father and the Son. All right. We receive the fruit of that tree in a garden that will be placed in... Um, the New Jerusalem, everyone. Okay. Now, in Revelations 4 5, or sucking you all. Let's go to Revelations 4 5. I'm going to be all over the place with this, this Bible today, but this is what's needed for this lesson right now. Sometimes you just got to go with the flow. All right. 4 or 5 revelations and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals okay the scroll from Ezekiel 2 9 10 and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who was worthy to open a book and to loose the seals thereof and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither uh, to look thereon. No one was able to open that book but the Lamb of God. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to uh, look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So the Lamb of God, the Son of God, is the one who's able to loose the seals. Okay, no one else. Has that right, all right? And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, and it had been slain, all right? Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth, all right? And he came and took the book up out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders, twenty-four, fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials are full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, the incense, the prayers, all right? So the lamb of God, the twenty-four elders fell down to the lamb of God, okay, which is the son of God, and with the, the golden vials, with the um, incense, which is uh, uh, represent the prayers of God, of the saints, okay? The prayers are our prayers, all right? So um, all of this will be in the New Jerusalem, all right? The Lamb of God, the prayers, the, the 24 elders, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals, therefore, for thou was slain and but redeem us, God, by the 
I was slain and has redeemed us to God by their blood, thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. See, when Jesus died on that cross, gave up his life for our sins, okay, for our sin deaths was paid, all right, he was slain for our iniquities, okay, by his stripes we are healed, all right, he was wounded on that cross for us, all right. And he took on that punishment and pain for us, everybody. So when we are walking with him and we, we take of the fruit of life, the tree of life, we're living creatures of God, we believe in him, all right? The, um, the angels rejoice, the heavens rejoice, the elders rejoice. Jesus said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, you all. So the 24, this is this is talking about the 24 elders. This is talking about the prayers of the saints. All right. These are the people that will be in New Jerusalem. All right. The believers. Okay. The fornicators, idolaters, the idolizing people, um, the abominable people, those people that has not pulled away from their sinful ways, the lust of the world. Um, will not inherit the riches of God, the riches of the kingdom of heaven, all right? And um, the, the seven spirits of God, that's the work of the Holy Spirit in, in revealing God to man, God to us, okay? That's the, that's the working of the Holy God, the Spirit of God, His anointing, His Spirit working in us. That's what that is, everyone. In Revelation 4, 6, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that set on him a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And he, when he had opened the seven seals, I heard the second beast saying, Come and see. And they went out, and another horse that was a power was given to him that thereon to take peace from the earth. Okay, everyone, now Jesus is coming back. The Lord God Almighty is coming back. He's the Lamb of God. He's coming back. He's destroying all death. Um, it's going to be no death in the kingdom of heaven, everybody. It's going to be no crime. It's going to be no nonsense. It's just going to be peace in the kingdom of God. Okay, now, in Revelations 5.1, the book seal, the seven seals, uh, book seal, seven seals, 5.1, everyone. Okay, yeah, I think I saw, I, I read that. The seven seals in the throne written in the backside, the seven seals. No one was able, worthy to open that seal but the Lord. Okay, now, and you did the prayers of the saints. 5.13, Revelations 5.13, everyone. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast of her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. All right. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich. Very, very powerful, everyone. The chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks and the mountains and said the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. See, God sits on the throne, okay? And he will get rid of all the evil, all that evil that we see now, we will see no more in the new Jerusalem, everybody, right? We will see, we will not see that. All those evil things, if we turn to God, we, the things we experience down here in this earth, we won't see all this death and the destruction in the New Jerusalem. Okay? It will be peace. All right? Revelations uh, 7, everyone. 144,000 tribe of Israel. Revelations 7, 4. Whew, this is a lot of research I had to do, you all. Um, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousands of all tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were twelve thousand, Reuben twelve thousand, Gad twelve thousand, Aser uh, twelve thousand, Lephthalim uh, sealed twelve thousand, tribe of Manasseh sealed twelve thousand, Simeon twelve thousand, Levi twelve thousand. 
And the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. Zebulon, 12,000. Joseph was sealed, 12,000. Benjamin was sealed, 12,000. This I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. All of nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes. Okay, we will have our, our, our right white robes because white is holiness, right is purity, and, and palms in their hands, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshiped God. All right. As amen, saying amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might. Be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Okay, everybody. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, th thou knowest. And he said to me, They are they which came out of great tribulation. That's the tribulation saints, you all, that will be there in the right uh, judgment throne. Okay? The 144,000 Israelites that came and made it through the tribulation. All right, everyone. Okay, now, and Revelations 2.26, everyone. Let's go to Revelations 2.26. We're talking about overcomers. See, Christ was an overcomer. Remember the devil tempted him in the wilderness? He wanted him to eat because he was fasting. Okay. All right, everyone. We in Revelations 2.26 right now. And he that overcometh and keepeth thy works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter. Remember, Aaron, the rod of Aaron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. And unto the angel of church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works before are perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. See, Jesus is saying for you all that, that, that he will give you the spirit of God, all right, when you're watchful, when you remain in steadfast, and will always abounding in the works of him, all right, he said to be keep watch. He said to keep walking with him, to be have repentant hearts, you all, because he know that he has great things for us to reign with him in New Jerusalem. But you cannot do that and go with God to be in New Jerusalem if you're not walking with him, if you're not repenting and giving your lives over to him. All right. We have to remain steadfast, always immovable, always abounding in the Lord, everyone. Okay. Um. All right, let me go into now. Let me talk to you all about Revelations. We're going to read Revelations 21 right now. You all, please stay with me. This is very, very important. Uh, Revelations 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Okay? So, Jesus, this is telling us that Jesus, this stuff that we as believers are seeing here is going to be gone. All right. That's why he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, because this is a carnal world. All right. It's carnality. All right. So we're not supposed to put this world over top of God. All right. We will not see the new Jerusalem if we do that. And now John saw the holy city, new Jerusalem coming down. That new Jerusalem, that new holy city is coming down. New heaven, new earth, everyone. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now think of a, a wife and a husband. The bride coming down the aisle 
with her beautiful attire, her little veil. She lifting up her little veil. Sometimes if you have a veil, she lifting it up for her, her, her husband. She's adorned with beauty. You know, she's beauty. So we are the bride, all right? And we waiting for our husband men to come and receive us, right? So we want to be glorious. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Okay, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. All right. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor cry. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. All this stuff be passed and gone. It will not be in New Jerusalem. It's not permitted because this stuff, this nonsense down here is not holy. God is a holy God. So, of course, the stuff will not be with the Lord, all right, in his kingdom. It will be left. It will be washed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Because we know the Lord, God Almighty, who was and is to come, is the Alpha and Omega. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Freely give, freely, freely receive. God give us that water that we shall never throw thirst. Everyone, that cleansing. That water is the cleansing that he has to cleanse us from our sins. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Just as I just read, Revelation 2, 26, the overcomers will have the powers over the nations. So we will have the overcomers, the believers will have overcame the things of this earth. Okay, so we can be able to sit in the new Jerusalem with Christ. All right, so we as overcomers will inherit the things of God. All right, we will be inherit all their glory. All right, and we shall be sons and daughters of God. But the fearful and unbelieving... Okay, listen to this. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. So this is the people that will not inherit the kingdom of God. The abominable people, the idolaters, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers. These like your witches and warlocks, um, soothsayers, uh, uh, murderers. Um, not believing in God, all these people will not inherit that kingdom, all right? They will not be written, be in New Jerusalem, all right? Which is the second death. Shall they have their part in the lake of fire, and burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, all right? And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. See, we are the bride. And God is the lamb. Jesus is the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, holy city, descending out of heaven from God. Okay. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Just picture that. It's going to be beautiful, everyone. It's going to be so pretty. Lit up with the glory of God and had a wall great and high and 12 gates. The 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. All right? The angels at each gate. It was an angel for God. And names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now, each one tribe will be at the gates. All right? For the 12 gates. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city has 12 foundations. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The 12 apostles, everyone. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and gates thereof. And the wall thereof. I would, have, I would love to see what John saw. And the city lieth four square. And the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. It's laid out as a, uh, as, as a square, okay? And he measured the wall thereof, 140 and four cubits, all right? 144 cubits, 144,000, according to the measure of a man that is other angel. 
and the building of the wall of it was a jasper and, and the city was pure gold like unto glass glass construction glass beautiful all the first stones you will see the different colors and all that gold it's going to be beautiful and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third chalcedony the fourth emerald which is my stone <laughs> green emerald the fifth sardonyx the sixth sardis the seventh crystallite the eighth beryl the ninth a topaz the tenth a crisperus the eleventh a Genseth, the twelfth amethyst and the twelve gates were twelve pearl twelve pearly gates i have in everybody Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold as it was transparent glass. This is beautiful. It is you looking at a transparent glass, beautiful, clear as crystal with beautiful colors, gold street. It's gonna be gorgeous. I can't wait. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. All right. So this will be the temple is spiritual temple. The temple is the Lamb of God, the Almighty God. That's the tease, the temple. All right. When Jesus was talking in the Bible about tear down his temple in three days, he'll build it up. All right. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. See, Jesus is the temple, the temple, the Lamb of God. He's the tree of life. He's the glory. He's the glorious Father in heaven. All right, the Son of God. And the nation of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. So the saved, the healed, the delivered, through the Spirit of God, we will be kings and queens with Christ. We will be coming back to judge. All right. And the kings of earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut all the day. All right. Now the gates will not be shot, all right, because the people who believe in God will be able to, to be coming through that gate, all right, there's no gates shut in the kingdom of heaven, all right, it's gates are open for the believers, all right, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, that's what I say, nothing will that defileth you, anything that's, that's of the devil, anything that's evil, will not be there, will not be able to be in New Jerusalem. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's, Lamb's Book of Life. No one that's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will not enter into New Jerusalem. All right? So we want our names to be written in the, in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, you all, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life. This is in Genesis, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So the leaves of the tree of life was for the healing of the nations, everybody. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. No more curse, his curse is gone. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. So it says, we shall see the face of God. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I know you all can't wait. You all who are believers and walking with Christ, you cannot wait. This will be so awesome. No pain. <laughs> just, 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 just glorious. God forgives his children. He forgive us who's repenting and turning from wickedness. We have the glorious light of the God of God all over us, all around us, through us and in us. And there shall be no light there, and they need no candles. You won't need to light candles if you have an outage. Like we have outages down here on earth. Your lights go out, you need to light a candle. We put, Jesus is our bright morning star. We don't need no lit candles. <laughs> we don't need no light. He is our light. For the Lord God giveth them light, y'all, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. 
Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Yes, this is this is this is something you all. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard him and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Can y'all imagine all oh, God showing you all this stuff? I'm asking God to show me these things in New Jerusalem. Then saith he unto me, See, thou did not, do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. The words is worship God. This is powerful, you all. And, and I have more or less in the come. The God say the words is worship him. Worship, worship, worship God. He is God Almighty. And he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as he shall be. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So anything that is unjust, not receiving Christ, walking with Satan, it will be unjust still, unholy still. When God comes into New Jerusalem, that will not be able to be there. The unjust things, the unjust people will not be in the New Jerusalem with the Lord Jesus Christ reigning forever and ever. Amen, you all. All right. So let's go to Ezekiel. 40. All right, you all. I'm just going to pick some few things out in Ezekiel for time wise. But Ezekiel 40, in the 5th and 20th year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, the 10th day of the month, in the 4th year, uh, 14th year, after that, the city was smitten in the self same day. The hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. So the Lord brought Ezekiel into this vision to see the holy city, you all. The visions he brought. He brought him to land to the land of Israel to let him see the things. He set upon me a very high mountain by which was a frame, a city of the south, okay? A city on the south, all right? And he brought him to behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass, all right? With a line flax in his hand and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. All right. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold, when thou not with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears, and set thine heart upon all that I show thee, for to the intent that I shall might show them unto thee, art thou brought hither, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. All right. So he's showing these things to Ezekiel, the measurements of the um, New Jerusalem. Okay. Behold, Ezekiel saw the wall on the outside of the house. And a man had a measuring reed of six cubits long, and, and um, uh, the measure, the breadth of the building with one reed he saw. He came to the gate, which looketh to the east, the east gate, everyone, holy, that's the holy gate, and went upon the stairs thereof, and measured the threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad, and the other threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad, all right? And every little chamber was one reed long, everyone. So he saw the, the chambers, the threshold. He saw the brass, Jesus. Okay, little chambers with five cubits, the threshold, a porch within, the vestibule, the chambers. He saw the measurements of the porches. He saw the chambers. And the little changes of the gate eastward were three on three this side and three on that side. The three were one of in measure, and the post had one measure on that side and on that side. See, God is going to enter the east gate, all right? And he measured the breadth of the entry of that gate, all right? And ten cubits long, and, and space also before the chambers. So Ezekiel saw, he saw the, um, in, he saw the insides, the measurements. He saw the porch. He saw the, um, the, um, you know, the different things, the steps and the roof, and he saw the building, all right? He saw all of that. He saw the structure, the gates, the structure, all right? He measured then the gate from the roof, one little chamber to the roof of another. The breath was five and 20 cubits door against door, all right? He registered, he knew the doors, the cubits, uh, the different things of the measurements, the vestibule, all right? He brought them to the outer courts, the inner courts and outer courts, so Ezekiel saw the measurements of the inner courts of, of, of measurements and the outer courts, all right? 
and there was narrow windows. He saw the windows to the little chambers, the, the, the uh, different, uh, everything it takes for this. God, uh, Ezekiel saw the things, the windows, the vestibule, the doorposts. Then brought him to the outward court, the inner court and outer courts. There were chambers and a pavement. The court round about 30 chambers were upon the pavement. Okay, corresponding. Then he measured the breath from the forefront of the lower gate into the forefront and inner courts. He saw a lot. Ezekiel saw a lot. He saw a lot. And the gate of the outward court, the inner courts and outer courts, you all, that looked toward the north. He measured the length thereof and the breadth thereof, the little chambers that were three on this side and three on that side, the post thereof and the arches. He saw the arches, the posts, the vestibules, the windows. Oh, boy, this is awesome. The arches, there were measurements of the first gate. The left thereof was 50 cubits and the breadth. Uh, the vestibules, there were windows and arches and palm trees. He had palm trees. This place is going to be awesome, you all. I just can't wait. It's going to be awesome. And they went up into heaven by seven steps, and the arches thereof were before them. The gate of the inner courts were over against the gate toward the north and toward the east. Measured the gate to the, uh, 100 cubits, the opposite. All right. So he, he saw all this, everybody. Ezekiel saw this. He saw all of these things. You are the palm trees, the, 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 the chambers. In verse 37, um, right now I'm in 40, 37, it says, And the posts thereof were toward the other court, and palm trees were upon the posts thereof, and on this side, and on that side, and the going up to a head, eight steps. Now, you all know that the palm trees are so beautiful. Those are some pretty um, trees. The palm trees are gorgeous. They're big pretty trees that's blowing in the wind. Oh, I can imagine. And the chambers and the entries thereof were by the posts of the gates where they washed the burnt offering, everyone. All right. And in the porch of the gate were two tables on the side and the two tables on that side to slay there on the burnt offering. See the tabernacle. Remember the tabernacle? Okay. And and the where they gave the Israelites gave the burnt offerings to God. Therefore, the burnt offering, the sun offering, and trespass offering. At the side without it, one go off unto the entry of the north gate were two tables. And on the other side, which was at the porch of the gate, were two tables. On the outer side, the vestibule, everybody. Four tables were on this side and four tables on that side. By the side of the gate, eight tables, wherein they slew their sacrifices, okay? This was the Jews slew the sacrifices. And the four tables were the home stone for the burnt offering of a cubit and a half long and a cubit and a half broad and one cubit high whereupon also they laid the instruments wherewith they slew the burnt offering and the sacrifice was slaughtered okay and the, the and within were hooks and hand broad fast and roundabout and upon the tables was the flesh of the offering and without the inner gate were the chambers of the singers in the inner court which was at the side of the north gate and their prospect was toward the south one at the side of the east gate having the prospect toward the north outside and he said unto me this chamber whose prospect is toward the south is for the priest the keepers of the charge of the house who have charge all right because we know that the priests were the people who intercede for god all right everybody could not enter at a point of time but the priests were able to go into certain holy places and the chamber whose prospect is toward the north is for the priest the keepers of the charge of the altar these are the sons of Zadok, among the sons of Levi, which come near to the Lord to minister unto him. So he measured the court in hundreds of cubits long and hundred cubits broad, four square in the altar that was before the house, the temple. Okay, And he brought me to the porch of the house and measured each porch of the porch. Five cubits on the side, five cubits on that side. On the breath, the gate was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. The length of the porch was 20 cubits and the breath 11 cubits, and he brought me by the steps whereby they were up to it. And there were pillars by the post, you know, pillars, those pillars, like you see in homes. Afterward, he brought me to the temple and he measured the post, all right, using it to the temple bought on the side, all right. Breath, the breath of the door was 10 cubits, all right, everybody. So, this was a lot of going on. The temple, um, the courtyard was separating. The courtyard was separate um, in here. And the different verses talk about the separated courtyard. 
uh, also the breadth of the face of the house and at a separate place toward the east, a hundred cubits. And he measured the left of the building over against the separate place which was behind it, and the galleries thereof on the one side and on the other side, and hundred cubits within the inner temple and the porches of the court facing, the doorposts and the narrow windows, and the galleries round about on their three stories over against the door, siled with wood round about, and from the ground up to the windows, and the windows were covered. This is um very, 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 very interesting. You are the holy of holies, to that about a door, even unto the inner house, and without, and by all the wall round about within, and without by measures. All right. It was made with cherubims and palm trees, so that a palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub. And every cherub had two faces, so that the face of man was toward the palm tree on the one side, the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. It was made through all the house round about, from the ground upon unto above the door with cherubims and palm trees made on and on the wall of the temple, the sanctuary, the posts of the temple were squared out of the face of sanctuary. The appearance of the one is the appearance of the other, the doorpost. The altar of the wood was three cubits high and left. The corners are thereof. This is so interesting just reading it, you all. He saw the corners, the tables, he saw so much. The palm trees, the planks, the cherubims, you all. He brought me, in verse 42, he brought me into the outer court, the way toward the north, and he brought me into the chamber that was over against the separate place, and which was before the building toward the north. Before the length of an hundred cubits was the north door, and the breadth was fifty cubits. He saw all the north gate, east gate, south gate. Oh, he saw everything, you all. This was a beautiful appearance. The entrances, the front entrance, the back end. He saw it all. Ezekiel, God gave uh, Ezekiel the vision of the inner course, the outer course, everything. He, he saw so much. He saw it all. He really saw it all, everyone. I want to read to you Isaiah 65, 725, everyone. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by name. I have spread. Okay, I'm sorry. I got to go to Ezekiel 65, 17. I'm reading the wrong thing. 17. For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mine. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing in her, be, uh, people a, a joy and I will rejoice in Jer Jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying therefore there shall be no more thence an infant of days nor an old man that have not filled his days for the child shall die a hundred years old but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed and they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. All right. See the back in Genesis where um, Adam and Eve was kicked out the garden. They could eat no more fruit, but we can eat plenty of fruit, the fruit of the spirit. You know, we and, and it's like being like, can you picture yourself in a big vineyard of grapes? And you're trampling on all the grapes and getting all the grape juice coming out, everybody. So this is just going to be, we have so much in store for us, for the kingdom. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain nor bring forth fruit forth uh, for trouble for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them and it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear the wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock and dust shall be the serpent's meat they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains saith the Lord so when you receive the throne of God when you receive the glory of God in New Jerusalem he said you will be able to be in his vineyard, you ever. You will have fruits of the spirit, the tree of life. You can eat from it. Your labor shall not be in vain. All this stuff, 
You are not over down here being disciples for God. All your living is not in vain. You will receive all your glory and your rewards in heaven in the new Jerusalem with Christ Jesus. But you must walk with him. He said the lamb and a wolf will lay down with each other. All right. It will be no nonsense. It will be no nonsense. Everybody will be getting along. It will be glorious. You are. It will be heaven on earth. For all those things have made hand made, my hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation, and he offereth swine's blood. He that burneth incense, as if the, um, he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. See, Jesus say that. See, he is a sacrificial lamb of, of God. Okay? See, he made that sacrifice for us. He is the sacrificial lamb. Whereas in the Old Testament ways, it was bring your offerings into the tent, then it became a tabernacle. Bring your offerings to God. Um, to him, people had different things um, in a money changing um, situation in the Bible. Um, where people were were destroying things in the temple. They were selling and buying in the temple. And Jesus said that they were not supposed to do that. He threw. I saw it in the vision before. He threw the ch tables over, you know, and. Um, those he don't want that kind of stuff. It's not gonna be his kingdom. It's not gonna be no no selling of merchandise and no no greed and fame and all that in 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 heaven. It's not gonna be no no kind of destruction there. All right, those greedy grabbing people, money hungering uh, people. Um, You will eat of the fruit of life, the tree of life, when you in New Jerusalem, when you walk in with Christ, everyone. When you walk in with God, he is so worthy to be trade, to be praised. He is so worthy to be reverenced, everyone. Jesus is worthy to be praised. I'm going to read uh, some of Exodus to you all before I leave you all. This is very, very important. Exodus 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel when came to Egypt, into Egypt. Every man ahead his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Nasher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seven souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. Okay, and Joseph died, and all his brethren, all that generation, the children of Israel, were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Lest thy multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them tent taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built the, for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, harshness. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, and mortar and in brick, and all men of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pura. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him, but if it be a daughter, then ye shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives, and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? And the midwife said unto him, Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered 
or the midwives come into them, they bear quickly. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mightily. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. Okay, everyone. So, we know that for the Hebrews, all right, because they were doing things against the Lord. They wasn't really serving him like they were supposed to, that Jesus had to punish them, put them in the wilderness for 40 for 40 years, everyone. But then he brought them back out, all right? So the people who turn from their ways, Israelites, Jews and Gentiles, who have been grafted in to the covenant, okay? These people will inherit the new Israel, the kingdom, the new Jerusalem, all right, you all? So there was an exodus, a big exodus, when Jesus bought the Israelites from out of the hands of the Egyptians, all right? But he's restoring his children, Jews and Gentiles, just restoring them back to him to reign with him in the new holy city, Jerusalem, where he will be our light and shiny armor. He will be our great and morning star. He will be the ruler over all things. He will be praised, all right? He will be praised. We will be blessed coming in and blessed going out. We will have our white garments and our new names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You all, these are the ones who will be reigning with him. All right. Those who, who loved ones who have passed, who, are, who you have buried um, in your life, who know that um, they're walking with Christ, believers, they will be also in the New Jerusalem. All believers will be in New Jerusalem, you all. So... That's walking right, steadfast, and we all was abandoned, repenting from their ways, and just walking in Christ and believing on Him. That He is the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, will be in heaven, on earth, paradise with God. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed this lesson. And um, just thank God every day. Pray to God. Pray for your loved ones, your families. Bless God, you all. All right, that he may be a blessing to you in your life. May the word of God sustain you and keep you and guard you through all understanding. Lead not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path, everyone. So let's pray, everyone. Hello, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We glorify your name. May we meet you in the new Jerusalem, Father, face to face with our new names, with our glorified bodies. Father, living in peace and joy and worshiping you and exalting you. Oh, Father, thank you, Jesus, healing over these nations. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the Lamb of God. We thank you for your mercy, Father. We thank you. We glorify you, mighty God, mighty to save and mighty heal, our deliverer, our way, our truth, and our light. Thank you for using me, Father, as your vessel. Oh, Father, I welcome you in this place. Your anointing, the Holy Ghost fire, be over us in our houses, our homes, our relationships, our families, our minds, our bodies, our spirits, our souls. God, we just embrace you. We just accept you in our lives. We just honor you. We praise you. We just keep walking with you. Let us be encouraged. Iron sharp and iron. One another. Sharpening one another, Lord. Not putting each other down, but encouraging one another to stay ye steadfast and move always abounding in the works of you. Lord, we thank you for everything, Lord. We praise your holy name. Those who are free are free indeed in Jesus' mighty name. You all, this has been fun. I, I've had a good time doing this today, you all, talking about the new Jerusalem. So may you all be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, you all, bye-bye. <laughs> Have a blessed day.